Hi, welcome to Take 5, where we daily consider devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is October 21st, and the title of today's devotional is Impulsiveness or Discipleship. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, Jude, verse 20. Jude is the Bible's next to last book. Few realize his being Jesus' brother, him modestly only identifying himself as the brother of James, also Christ's brother, whose own work follows the book of Hebrews. Neither of them were disciples until after the resurrection, but once saved, James became the first pastor of the newly founded church in Jerusalem. The known authors of the New Testament are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Paul, Peter, and James, and Jude. Hebrews is uncertain, though most likely Paul as well wrote it. Chambers identifies mankind as being impulsive. When I read this, I saw myself described a person who unfortunately still acts with impulse. In yesterday's study regarding sanctification, Dr. Chambers saying for us to stop saying that we want to be sanctified and to do it. Make it a matter of action. As for impulsiveness as well, we are to stop it. Dr. Chambers begins, There was nothing of the nature of impulsive or thoughtless action about our Lord, but only a calm strength that never got into a panic. Jesus was never one to act impulsively. Impulse is often a behavior driven by panic, and Christ never panicked. It's not that he was ever out of control, but that God was always in control. This was achieved through constant prayer and communion with him. Jesus was, all, was holy due to holy being under the control of God. Chambers points out that most of us develop our Christianity along the lines of our own nature, not along the lines of God's nature. Most live by a manner as to how they think that a Christian should act when guessing is not at all needed because the Bible tells us how to behave. Lives are not lived according to the Bible due to not spending enough time in it. When you hear a person say, well, the way I see it, or what I think it means is, or some statement like these, you are hearing from a person who is spending little time in God's word and more in living it according to how they think or want to be a Christian. This can be due to not wanting to be restrained by the Bible and the harshness put upon us to be holy. A worldly Christian does not find fun in the fundamentals of God's word. O.C. continues, impulsiveness is a trait of the natural life and our Lord always ignores it because it hinders the development of the life of a disciple. In saying that God ignores our impulsiveness, Chambers tells us that God does not give approval to it. Instead, watch how the Spirit of God gives a sense of restraint to impulsiveness, suddenly bringing us a feeling of self-conscious foolishness which makes us instantly want to vindicate ourselves. When brought under the conviction of, our, of the Holy Spirit, our immediate inclination is to defend our behavior and try to make it right before God but wrong can never be right with him. Chambers points out that impulsiveness is all right in a child, but is disastrous in a man or woman. An impulsive adult is always a spoiled person. Impulsiveness needs to be trained into intuition through discipline. Hero C directs how to turn around impulsive behavior. One must train it into being intuition, meaning using the impulse as a stop sign to in order to take time and consider what would instead be the right behavior. Don't act upon impulses. Stop and think. Seek God for right behavior. Chambers lets us know that discipleship is built entirely on the supernatural grace of God. Walking on water is easy to someone with impulsive boldness, but walking on dry land as a disciple of Jesus Christ is something altogether different. Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus, but he followed him at a distance on dry land. The letters of Peter prove him as a prime example of one whose impulsive nature that we always saw in the gospel. Christ shaped it into qualities as read in 2 Peter 1 verses 5 through 8. O.C. lets us know that it requires the supernatural grace of God to live 24 hours of every day as a saint, not hopping about impulsively as do the lost, but 
learning to be holy on the ordinary streets among ordinary people, which is not something learned in five minutes. Christ makes us distinct even among the ordinary as diamonds produced from coal by tremendous heat and pressure. Thanks for being here today. And now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.